Good afternoon. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure uh, to be here presenting uh, this other topic, technological upgrading in uh, China and India. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, to present. Um, this presentation is actually based on uh, work that I've done uh, when I was at the OECD. So usual you know, disclaimer applies here. Uh, the views expressed here, solely my own, not uh, attributed to the IMF or the uh, OECD. Okay. Um, to motivate, you know, uh, as we know, the China and India has posted you know, uh, phenomenal economic growth over the last three decades. In the case of China, then like over 10% uh, uh, per year, and in India around 6% uh, uh, of until a uh, global crisis hit. Of course, for a bit different reason. Uh, now, after the um, crisis you know, began, uh, China and India growth rate uh, has been uh, slowing down a bit, uh, reflecting a number of things, such as you know, weak demand from uh, um, US or Europe, or uh, some domestic macroeconomic imbalances. Uh, in China, like a credit uh, field, you know, the investment, uh, asset bubbles, and then uh, also need to go back more uh, rebalance, uh, rebalancing uh, toward the consumption. But then in uh, India, on top of those uh, similar kind of uh, macroeconomic uh, imbalances, large fiscal deficit inflation, and uh, large current account deficit, and uh, uh, more structural you know, nature uh, bottlenecks. But, but uh, in this presentation, we're going to focus on the somewhat long-term perspectives uh, going back to the you know, last three decades, then behind phenomenal economic growth, uh, to what extent it reflects you know, the uh, technological upgrading. So by training as a macroeconomist, uh, we're going to take a stock more systematic uh, manner what was happening in terms of this uh, technological upgrading in China and in India. So to put some uh, uh, the, the way of think you know, to this issue, we can uh, start from some uh, macroeconomic uh, framework uh, in a sense. Well, from a developing country's point of view, then technological upgrading will depend on the extent of uh, adoption and assimil uh, assimilation of the advanced uh, foreign technologies. In other words, uh, 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 diffusion. Uh, earlier, uh, Tetsushi uh, presented about uh, uh, knowledge, you know, the sphere of so knowledge diffusion at the micro level, but uh, we can think of it in a uh, uh, macro, you know, aggregate level. But then uh, we have to also think about it through what kind of a mechanism or channels it will take place. So uh, we can uh, think of a number of channels, including uh, import of the uh, capital good that embodied uh, uh, new or advanced technologies, or foreign direct investment, FDI, and export activities itself, and then also participation in uh, uh, international uh, production network. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to combine these three uh, uh, approaches. One, uh, trying to uh, understand the technological changes and sources and channels, putting in, uh, in place China and India in cross-country perspectives. But then we also look at uh, some of these, each components in the specific you know, China and uh, uh, India uh, context. So um, one of the best uh, way of studying this, uh, the measurement of uh, technological progress at the uh, national level, then could be a total factor productivity. So using a very standard, you know, the uh, Cobb Douglas uh, production function form like that, but then typical uh, total factor productivity is measured as a sort of a, a residuals after you're accounting for the contribution from the capital stock and the human capital and labor. Uh, but clearly, uh, including Bob Solo and many other economists in the next generation after him, you know, saw that uh, important determinants of a TFP is a technological progress. So TFP could be a good measure of a, a, a technological change. But then uh, another additional uh, good reason to start with this uh, TFP is uh, uh, if you look at it, uh, I'm going to show you in a minute, you know, in the uh, growth literature, actually this TFP explains more than half of the cross-country variation 
in terms of uh, growth and then the income level. So TFP uh, is quite a uh, useful and also important uh, indicators. But I can come back, you know, this how we're gonna uh, construct this data. But but uh, here's what it looked like. So in here. 1970 through 2011, then on a vertical axis, growth rate of the labor productivity, output per worker, and then on a horizontal axis, this is the growth rate of a total factor productivity. Amazingly, you can see that very, very strong uh, correlation between those two. And then on the top of it, uh, China, you see this uh, about 7% on average productivity growth rate, and it comes with the uh, uh, quite close, you know, 3% uh, total factor productivity growth. But then uh, in, the, in terms of level, then the latest years we can get to 2011, for that then uh, again, labor productivity level and then TFP level very closely correlated. And yet uh, China and India, the level actually pretty low. So if you look at it this, then uh, uh, using this uh, development accounting, then uh, relative to US, putting a US as one, then uh, labor productivity, China and India was 14% and 10% each. And then uh, in terms of components, then uh, uh, human capital was a 71% and uh, 53%. But then this TFP was a 37 and then 46%, a little bit higher than uh, the labor productivity itself. But then uh, quite interesting enough in here, last column, uh, unlike our perceptions about uh, capital intensive you know, the growth in China, for example, this capital deepening in terms of capital stock per worker is very, very low, like 20% uh, of US, and then in uh, India, 7% of uh, uh, US only. So as you can see, there is a huge scope for uh, catching up in both you know, the uh, TFP level or uh, uh, you know, capital stock per worker or outcome like uh, labor productivity itself. But um, this is a level. But as I said uh, earlier, I showed you earlier, the, despite the level is still very low, but very interesting enough, China, uh, especially China, and then a bit uh, lesser degree in uh, India, they actually experienced uh, quite strong TFP growth. So for instance, China, out of a 10% growth rate, almost 35% uh, explained by this TFP growth, 3.48% point. And then, of course, the, they also experienced a very strong uh, physical investment, therefore, uh, 55% uh, of this output growth contributed by this uh, capital investment. Okay? But then uh, India, um, quite similar, but with a smaller magnitude, but out of a close to 7% annual growth rate, uh, almost 20% explained by the total factor productivity growth, and then another 55% coming from uh, uh, fiscal unit you know, capital investment, although coming from a uh, low uh, level. But what's striking about this, um, these two economy is uh, compared to um, the newly industrial, you know, industrialized economies such as South Korea or Singapore, Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, unlike their uh, uh, growth experience, predominantly uh, driven by the capital accumulation. If you remember, there was a huge debate in the 1990s, like Young and Krugman, all you know, uh, uh, emphasizing the nature of the growth they happening in uh, this industrialized, you know, the uh, newly industrialized countries. But compared to that, China, India, very interesting enough, showing the very strong TFP growth. Although the level is still today is pretty low. Okay, so indication is technological uh, upgrading. Uh, if you accept that TFP as a good measure of a technological progress, then clearly technological upgrading happening uh, quite fast, uh, fast pace in uh, China and a bit modest, but uh, in uh, India as well. Okay. And then uh, here's another way of looking at the uh, technological uh, component. Um, the, the technology employed in the production uh, process could also manifest itself in the uh, uh, kind of uh, the, the varieties of goods or uh, quality of goods. So we can maybe observe from the export uh, structures. As uh, Daniel Rodriguez and Schultz you know, earlier observed, What's so special about China and India is somehow they tend to export much highly sophisticated products you know, than uh, uh, typical countries in their uh, uh, income level. And clearly, as I'm going to show you uh, using uh, uh, UN cultural data at the 3D level, clearly China 
uh, especially China, has dramatically shifted it into a much more uh, capital-intensive and then uh, technology-intensive product. And uh, this is something uh, uh, kind of uh, cutting across you know, the uh, themes. We saw that uh, yesterday, Justin Lin and then uh, Celestine uh, the, um, Monga, they're talking about uh, uh, the, the, uh, the upgrading and then uh, moving from a low income to middle income and then to uh, higher income. But clearly, if they stick to this you know, uh, uh, comparative advantages uh, based on the uh, simple nature of uh, low skill and labor intensive products, then probably China is you know, the export and products might lo have looked very differently uh, from uh, what they do uh, now. And apparently, they uh, uh, took some uh, uh, two-pronged approaches. One, they tried to create uh, lots of jobs so that they can observe uh, 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 surplus labor, but at the same time, they try to upgrade the economies quite uh, rapidly. But we'll come back to that later. But here is uh, what uh, you can uh, uh, see what's so special about China and India in terms of uh, high-tech export shares. Then compared to their level of income, they actually stand out. Of course, Philippine in here, which is not our uh, subject, but Philippine uh, posting uh, even uh, striking uh, 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 almost you know 60% of uh, uh, export total export actually under uh, uh, the category of a high tech. So this is what the people talking about. But we we want to go a little bit further on that. So uh, we're gonna take a look at this you know uh, detailed traded data, and we're gonna uh, classify the technological level by the different groups. So one way to do is uh, uh, to use methodology by the LL and the OECD differentiating primary products, resource-based manufacturing, such as uh, food and then uh, leather uh, or cement or uh, petroleum, which is requiring some uh, basic skills, sometimes uh, quite intensive in uh, capital stock, but, but uh, uh, low nature of the uh, uh, technology. But then uh, low-tech uh, manufacturers, such as you know, textiles, uh, apparels, and uh, foodwares, things like it, which are requiring uh, some standardized, you know, well-diffused technologies, which are requiring a bit uh, low level of uh, uh, skills. But actually, these low-tech uh, manufacturers, uh, the, the International Production Network, which I'm going to bring up later on, uh, it has gone through massive relocation from uh, rich to a uh, low-income uh, country because uh, uh, these low-tech uh, uh, industries wanted to benefit from a uh, low cost of labor. However, though, more complex, you know, the, uh, the design function or manufacturing function actually remaining in the advanced countries. But then a medium tech, uh, largely covering uh, automotive or engineering products and uh, uh, requiring additional, you know, the, uh, the advanced, more advanced technology and then some relatively higher level of R&D components and then it, uh, especially the automobiles and then engine uh, type of things requiring a lot of actually extensive supply uh, uh, network. And uh, unlike uh, low tech uh, industries, medium tech, uh, this type of uh, uh, engineering products has not gone through much uh, relocation. But then finally, high tech nature like electronics, pharmaceutical, you know, all medical devices, uh, especially electronic components as we know now, uh, has gone through a, a massive you know, relocation uh, under the uh, international production network, or sometimes called unbundling of uh, production uh, stages. This type of industry requiring a, a high advanced you know, technology, fast change in nature, high R&D components, things like it. But using this kind of notions, we construct some of the data. But before we do that, let me show you. Just China, uh, comparing uh, the, the 15 largest exporters, high tech and medium tech and low tech, then China made a biggest gain in terms of uh, a high tech and then medium tech. For example, in you know, high tech, in, uh, back in 1995, then in terms of uh, uh, export shares in the world, uh, was uh, 13th place, but now is number one. Yeah? Uh, 2007, before the uh, global crisis set in. But then, uh, uh, in terms of medium tech uh, categories, it was a 16th place, but then now move up to a uh, uh, fourth place. And then uh, low tech uh, is also number one. And then uh, India, in here, much, much smaller uh, compared to uh, uh, China in terms of integration with the world economy, but uh, India is uh, uh, now among the 15th place in the low tech. Yes. I need to move a little bit faster. 
But then uh, here, as you can see, you know, China, India, actually, they um, moved out of this low tech and then into medium tech and then high tech uh, nature. And then also uh, India uh, moved uh, out of this low tech uh, manufacture to the uh, medium tech, but the magnitude has been much, much uh, modest compared to China. So um, one question we are going back to the uh, measurement of a technological uh, progress. Uh, we want to link to the together, and then to what extent you know, this technological sophistication might be a link to the TFP. So I construct the index, but then uh, since I'm running out of time, so uh, let me move a little bit quick. And then uh, constructing this, you know, the index, assigning a higher uh, numbers to the uh, uh, high tech, you know, the uh, more advanced technology components, then again, uh, there's a positive correlation between uh, technological so sophistication you know, of export and then total factor productivity. In other words, countries uh, uh, export in the uh, more highly advanced nature of products, then probably uh, learning the technological upgrading happening uh, through a number of channels. And then, or alternative, uh, countries with a higher level of technology might uh, tend to export uh, the specialized uh, more into uh, high tech natures. But having said that, one uh, striking fact is China, India, they apparently having a much higher level of uh, technological sophistication according to uh, export uh, nature. Compared to it, actually, uh, TF level is pretty low. So for, ex for example, China, then if you only take into account that the face value, what they export, then you, uh, this simple OLS will suggest that uh, TF level should be approaching 70% uh, of US, but uh, not the only 25% in the year 2007. So apparently, there is uh, some gap. And we'll come back for that later when I talk about the uh, uh, international production uh, network. But then, OK, since we talk about a measurement um, the, of, uh, of a technological uh, upgrading, then let's talk about uh, some individual channels uh, quickly. FDI, we know that this is uh, one of the main channels of technological uh, progress. And if I have some time later, then we're going to talk about uh, some of the uh, uh, policies. But actually, uh, previous sessions uh, quite lengthy, you know, in the, uh, the case studies and all that, providing what China has uh, done in terms of uh, promoting uh, FDI. But here's a look. You know, there has been a big increase in the FDI. And uh, uh, obviously, China is among the top, you know, the uh, recipient of the FDI uh, inflows. And then here's uh, what you can see, the strong, uh, you know, positive correlation, again, amount of FDI. Uh, against the uh, TFP growth. And then uh, if you look at uh, TFP uh, growth against uh, FDI, probably originating from a more advanced countries like OECD, might have a more uh, technological you know, the component. And then again, quite a strong uh, positive correlation. And then one of uh, 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 this, you know, the empirical uh, evidence clearly, you know, cl closely, uh, clearly, uh, uh, the, uh, clearly showing that uh, strong evidence of a positive impact of FDI on the uh, TFP growth. So for example, you know, the coefficients are around uh, 0.3 and 4. So in uh, China case, then uh, uh, annual average of FDI inflow has been around 3.6% of GDP. So multiplying this 0.3 or 4, then it amount 1.5% annual uh, contribution to the TFP growth. And then we saw that in the 2000 period, uh, in China, uh, TFP growth rate has been around 3.5%. So almost more than uh, uh, one third could be explained by this FDI uh, from the uh, other countries. What about uh, imports of uh, um, capital goods? This could be another channel. And then in here, uh, capital goods imported from the OECD countries because you know the uh, equipment productions or R&D, the activities mainly concentrated in uh, advanced economy. So. Uh, that's another maybe a ch important channel of uh, technological uh, uh, transfer. And then again, there is uh, quite a strong positive correlation. So all sorts of you know, the uh, estimation method, and then they all turned out to be uh, strongly positive, like a 0.1 or 0.2 percent point per 1 percent of uh, 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 capital imports as a percent of GDP. But then here are some pictures for the China and India. Look at this. There has been astonishingly high level of increases in the uh, importation of the capital equipment in China. Of course, Japan and Korea, since you know, the great takeoff, then they've gone to the uh, very uh, tremendous increase as a person change. 
And yet, the sheer size of magnitude in, the, in China, uh, that's actually uh, unheard. And then uh, another anecdote, you know, the evidence China became last year the largest buyer of uh, industrial robot. Uh, and uh, clearly, that could be another channel. But um, uh, this is a, a third aspect regarding uh, technological uh, uh, upgrading. Yes. This international production network uh, should be a good uh, the, the explanation why there is such a gap between seemingly very sophisticated uh, export products and yet overall you know, the, uh, the TFP level pretty low. So how are you going to reconcile these two, right? And uh, it looks like maybe it has to do with this IP and uh, international production uh, network. Because this, you know, they, they are export uh, nature has dramatically changed into the uh, high tech natures, and yet big questions are still lingering. How much of that actually in real? And also, uh, is it really a China uh, uh, doing more than actually uh, uh, the assembling uh, imported uh, uh, parts and components, right? And the, what about the uh, role of the foreign invest firms in terms of uh, uh, this technological uh, sophistication? And uh, clearly, this uh, showing that you know the the nature of the why China tremendously uh, transformed into a high tech uh, export uh, orientation, and yet uh, the level might be uh, still low because processing exports more than fifty percent of total. And uh, if you look at it, uh, domestic uh, components of the value added of uh, export, uh, in the case of China, then pretty low, still like 20%, uh, especially for uh, high tech uh, products. And then uh, foreign invest firms, uh, they actually uh, explaining more than 60% of a uh, total export in China. So I almost done, but let me show you some bit more uh, uh, um, the, um, the chart in here. So interesting enough, if you look at it, for example, high tech. Uh, the, the categories, then trade balance, they're running a trade surplus against US and Europe, but they're running a trade deficit against Japan or Korea or Taiwan, which is providing uh, these components and then uh, equipment. And also here's another evidence, strong evidence, suggesting why China is a sort of a major uh, final assembler in the uh, big you know, international production network. If you look at it in here, imports and then uh, um, export of uh, components, parts and components, then import is almost like 66% uh, uh, of the total import. And yet, if you look at it uh, finished good, then um, export is almost approaching a 60%. So bottom line is, China predominantly importing uh, lots of uh, parts and components, and then in terms of export, most of them are finished good. So clearly, that's a strong indication uh, of uh, China being a final uh, product assembler in this, you know, the international um, uh, production network. And then uh, additional effort, uh, they uh, having uh, uh, emphasizing the the, uh, the capacity building to innovate. So R and D expenditure, for example, then has been uh, come close to two percent, which is always the average. And also even India uh, coming close to 1%. So clearly, they invest a lot. Of course, they still have to uh, translate into higher uh, performance in other uh, technological components. But one very encouraging uh, thing is this kind of uh, patenting uh, activities. For example, China, then since 2000 period, then uh, in the case of a foreign-oriented patents family, meaning uh, uh, patents in application by the Chinese inventors uh, uh, filed in uh, more than two countries, have a tremendous increase, you know, of course, from a bit uh, low level. But over the last 10 years, has uh, increased in a very uh, dramatic manner, separating the path behind that, uh, Russia and you know, India and other countries. And also, human capital is still uh, catching up. But one uh, in interesting thing is uh, uh, they emphasize uh, greatly on uh, the tertiary education, unlike other countries, emphasize the primary, secondary education. So if you look at it, the, this, you know, the, uh, all the kinds of uh, the aspect of uh, uh, technology, you know, upgrading or surrounding environments, then clearly this uh, uh, pointing into that uh, uh, very uh, fertile ground for the uh, further acceleration in the uh, uh, technology upgrading. So, very quickly uh, sum up, uh, then 
TFP uh, level has been pretty low, no matter how you measure it, either TFP level or uh, valuated components. And yet, in terms of percent change, has been uh, uh, very rapidly uh, changing, improving. But then uh, this new evidence clearly show that you know, this FTI and then uh, import of capital good is uh, very important in explaining behind that, uh, the strong TFP, you know, the performance. But then uh, uh, one of the thing is uh, China's uh, um, the, uh, role in the international production network might uh, have some explanation why there's some still gap between the export structures and then uh, the uh, technological level. And yet, just a couple of points to uh, uh, de-emphasize then, this technological upgrading is not happening as sort of automatic response. Rather, they actually uh, cultivated, you know, environment and then, you know, targeting uh, FDI uh, to certain industries such as uh, high-tech nature. And also they try to promote the uh, capability to observe, you know, technology and innovate by uh, the uh, promoting uh, investment in human capitals and R&D. So this all add up to, uh, um, it seems like they uh, been successful you know, in uh, generating this very uh, rapid pace uh, technological upgrading. But, but uh, when it comes to uh, possibility of replicating same experiences in other countries, probably one thing's lacking uh, in other countries is uh, uh, they do not have such a big market as uh, China and India does. So probably uh, that kind of a strategy uh, trading uh, market access in exchange for the uh, uh, technology may not be uh, available option for other nations, which is available apparently China and India. But uh, let me save it here. Thank you very much. <laughs>